Back when I started at Car Advice a few months ago, the bloke I sit next to, Tony Crawford, wouldn't stop talking to me about this video he did back in the day. It was an off-roading video of the Land Rover Freelander 2. They took it out to some pretty hard tracks around the Lithgow and Zigzag area. It kept going on and on about it, so I thought I'd check out the video. And actually, I really enjoyed it. Awesome video. It's actually one of the most viewed videos on the Car Advice YouTube page, a run and gun off-road review of the then new Land Rover Freelander back in 2009. Car Advice has come a long way since then. The Land Rover Freelander 2 has been superseded by the Discovery Sport. But to make it a little more exciting, we've also brought along the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. Both of these soft-roading SUVs come from brands with some serious off-roading history. Think the Land Rover Defender, an iconic off-roading vehicle, and the very capable Jeep Wrangler. Both of these cars have those attributes in spades. But how far can a soft-roading SUV really go off-road? Before you head off-road, it's important to know where you're going to be recovering your vehicle from if you do get into trouble. This Jeep on the front here, two big points on the front, one big red one on the back too, so they're pretty hard to miss. The Land Rover, a little bit more subtle. On the front, you've got to take about two minutes, undo two screws, and you'll take this panel off pretty quick. There's also one on the back there that you've got to screw in. And a word to the wise, if you're going to be going off-road, it's probably better off doing this before you get bogged rather than afterwards. Make life a bit easier. So this is a uh, Discovery Sport SI4, and that normally has an 18-inch wheel. Uh, this has the optional 20s, which might look pretty flash, but there is definitely a bit of a compromise there when you head off-road. So you can't see, like you can see there, there's not a whole lot of sidewall to play with as you air down. That wheel's going to get closer to the ground more chance of damage, that sort of thing. So, got to be a little bit more cautious with tyre pressures and probably put a bit more strain on the traction systems this car has, but we'll air down a little bit and see how we go. I'm just waiting for the tyre gauge, but as you can see, I've got more of a traditional tyre, better suited to off-roading. This isn't an all-terrain by any stretch, it's more of a road-based tyre, but you can see here, I've got a much bigger sidewall. Now, that allows me to go down to a lower tyre pressure. While Sam's gone to 25, I may go down to around 20, 22, and that'll spread the tyre pattern and give me more grip as I go down this slope. It's still, um Still got to follow some of those basics of off-roading, I suppose, and that's low E tyre pressures, know where they're at and adjust them to what you're doing. Um, these are a bit limited because of the wheel and tyre size, so 25 PSI will be the go, I think. If you go lower than that, it's just risky, so we'll, we'll stick to that and see how we go. Who goes first? That's the big question. Do you want to rock off? Best of three. Oh, I've done it again. All right. So I just lost the rock off. Uh, looks like it's me going down first. There's a, it's a bit of a descent and there's a few different options you can take. So it'll be a good little test, I think, to see how much clearance these things have and how the traction systems work. And hopefully we won't get into too much trouble. See what it's like on the other side too, because there's a pretty reasonable climb out. We can always come back out if it gets a bit too gnarly, but we'll see how we go. I'm going to use these modes that are available to me. Mud and ruts would be the one to choose, I think. And I've also got this thing called All Terrain Progress Control, which is kind of like a hill descent control for Land Rover. This isn't what you would call particularly difficult terrain, but it's probably something that an owner of a car like this would look at and go, well, I'm not doing that. But I think these cars will handle this pretty easily. Got hill descent mode on, so all I need to do is use the paddles to get my speed right. And then all I have to do is steer. All right, so far I haven't bottomed out, which is pretty good, I think. I think that Jeep might have the edge for ground clearance against this one. But slow and steady is what it's all about here. Going over this rock ledge, nice and slow. Goes on, those brakes are pretty bitey there. And we are 
down. I'll just bring that rear end down slowly. Done. All good. And as you can hear it in the background, you can hear the hill descent going on. And that's that sort of rubbing sort of noise. Loud. And that's the brakes coming on and off, slowing the car down. And I'm crawling down here at two kilometres an hour, which is just perfect for me. And just watching where I'm going, making sure that I'm not going over anything particularly too steep. Now there's a pretty big washout here, fair amount of erosion, so I'll have to uh, be a little bit tricky with how I approach it. I can't take it straight on, this thing will just bottom out straight away, so it's going to be more about winding my way through. Now how this thing works, it, instead of having lots of wheel articulation, it prefers to just have some pretty tricky electronic aids. It'll control wheel spin quite well. And it will let you sort of slide along despite having wheels going up, down and everywhere. So that's that was pretty controlled, that was quite good. Now I do find sometimes when you've got hill descent control, that first couple of metres, it can feel like it's running away, but you've got to trust the car and let it do its thing. If you do want to go a little bit faster, you can up the speed with the paddles, plus for up or increased speed, and minus for a slower speed. Really great thing is with these sorts of traction aids, they do help a less experienced driver drive these things actually quite easily. You can not worry about your throttle and your brake as much. You've still got to cover them, definitely. But they can help you concentrate on picking your line, looking at your wheel placement really closely, and just ensuring that you're picking the right places to put those wheels. There we go, all terrain progress control. Now off we go once again. Oh! Now it's bottomed out there pretty hard. Should be alright though. Bit of a tree root, I didn't spot that actually. Just uh, watch that tree root there Dom, caught me out. Copy that. Now I've been warned about a root, a tree root right in front of me, so I'll do my best to avoid that. One of the best things you can really do is just be really tricky with the sort of lines that you're choosing in these cars because they don't have as much clearance as other bigger four-wheel drives. But that's not to say that you can't do some decent stuff. Yeah, just... Oh, far out. Whew. Tricky. I think we got through unscathed. Dom, uh, I found out the hard way that on this little log here that you're about to come up against, there's a pretty big drop off on the other side of it actually that caught me out. So, very good test for clearance. I think I came away unscathed, but just slow and steady, you should be right. Copy that, I'll take it easy through there. How close are we? Yeah, you're a bit, bit cosy here on this More thing. Angle. You might have to come back actually, and I can chuck a rock under. See uh, on the side of the Jeep there, it's just got plastic runners. Um, I might have taken a slightly different line in the Discovery, but it just started to hit, so to save damaging the car, I'll just pack the track a little bit. Right, yeah. Should be right, mate. Slow and steady. It's close. Yeah. Keep going that line. It's 
So that time I controlled the car myself. I didn't use the hill descent because it was a bit of a tricky situation and I didn't want the car to run away from me. So there are a mixture of ways you can use the onboard systems and for the average person, the hill descent control is gonna help them and make it much easier to get down a slope. Nothing in it there, but worked. A little bit of uh, building there helped just make it a bit easier. So uh, you can do stuff like that in these less capable cars, but you just gotta be a bit smart about it, I suppose. Be really picky with your line and just look at it and have someone spot you if you are a bit unsure. But so far, so good. Did that hill descent work or? Yeah, yeah. I didn't touch anything. Didn't? Okay. No, but yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, okay. Even when you got one wheel up in the air, it still doesn't, Controlled it. doesn't and with run away locker, or anything. the rear locker on as well? No, I didn't no. have the rear locker on that time. Cool. I'll turn that on going up and see what yes. happens. But yes. um, yeah, hill descent worked really well. Like a lot of them though that I've used, when you first turn it on and then when you first lift off the brake, the car feels like it's running it away runs, until yeah, it kicks yeah, in. Yeah. It's so a bit nerve-wracking, yeah, yeah, something to be aware of. If you've mm. bought a car like this and you get in it mm -hmm. and you use it for the first time, yep. it will feel like it's running yeah. away until it starts sort of you've controlling got to, uh, the vehicle. You've got to start on easier drops, yeah. I think, just to yeah. get a feel for how the system works. Yeah, if works. you're too close to something, I it'll wouldn't just, use it because yeah. it'll fly out at it first yeah. and then yeah. it'll come on. Yeah. But yeah, it worked really well once it was going. Mm. So seeing as I was down first, going down there, do you reckon we could swap spots and you'll be first on the way up? Okay. What do you reckon? Sounds good. All right. Yeah. I'm going. Okay, here we go. We're going to go up. I've locked the diff. I'm in full low still. And I'm in manual mode. In first. So I can crawl slowly. Now, you can leave it in auto if you like but that's not my preference personally. I like to be able to control the car. Now I'm getting up high to see over the bonnet here. So I need to avoid a rut on one side and a wheel will drop in here. And there it is, get a bit of lift. But with a diff lock on, no problem at all. Haven't even spun a wheel yet. Well, now we have, there we go. Just a little bit of extra acceleration to get over that little mound and we're up easy. Now I've got all-terrain progress control here, so one thing that's different to hill descent is that this will work going up hills as well as down on the flat. It'll try and hold a steady speed for you. So it means that you can go really nice and slow and let the car worry about holding the right speed. And just testing it out here, that car is doing all the throttle work for itself. There we go, there's traction control going. I'll just feed a little bit more through. There it goes. So a little bit of coercion. Wheels are lifted. And it's managed to figure it out itself. Which, that's pretty good actually. This is a fairly challenging climb for a vehicle of this calibre. So the diff lock makes this stuff so much easier because it locks power 50-50 to the rear wheels, which means they're always going to be spinning at the same rate, giving you better traction. If you didn't have a diff lock, your power would be transferred to the wheel with the least resistance. And unless you have computer onboard systems to control that and split the power, you're really going to start wheel spinning and not go anywhere. There we go. So far, so good. Tree root on the back there. Pop it over, there we are. And I'll just thread through these trees. Now that beeping is just again, the proximity warning saying that I'm pretty close to trees. Now when you're forward driving, that's gonna happen all the time. Nothing to be worried about. Just be aware of where you are in relation to your surrounds and make sure that you're far enough away that you're not hitting anything. So I've got a bit of wheel spin here. I'm stuck on a mound and that there has just kicked in and I've just popped out of that section pretty easily now. Dom's taking on the next bit in the Jeep. Now you can see he's probably 
a little bit short on clearance. So, um, so is this car, but you've got to just be conscious of what's going to go underneath between your wheels. You almost want to straddle ruts as much as you can just to make sure that your clearance isn't going to bottom out in the middle and leave you high and dry, but you're doing a pretty good job there. I was watching Sam come up behind me in the Land Rover and on that corner of where I just got stuck and the diff lock kicked in, he's made that pretty easily now. He's behind me. We're away up this next section. Again, lightly on the accelerator, nothing too extreme. Fast is not necessarily better at all. Just a steady acceleration you is what you want to do. Oh dear. Thanks for the warning, Siri. So we're in an area with no turn by turn guidance, which is handy to know. Now I noticed the Dom was slipping to the side on this part of the track, the tyres just lacking a little bit of grip. And we'll see how this one goes, I imagine it might do the same, I'll try and counter it. So far so good. Just pop up over this ledge here. There we go. And we're good. I did all that in full low as well, obviously, and that is the safest way to go about going up a hill. You're always in control, car doesn't run away from you. Nice and easy. Wasn't too bad, mate, wasn't too bad. There was definitely that harder bit there where just at the start you had to chuck a pretty hard left yep. and straddle a rut, and this thing was on two wheels, I think, at one spot, and it had to have a bit of a think about what it was doing. The wheels spun for a little bit. But it figured it out and did it in a pretty controlled manner, so yeah, excellent. I think top marks. Excellent. Well, the Jeep, not too bad either. Diff lock on. Mm -hmm. Crawled up there, hardly touching the throttle. Yep. Probably about two kilometres an hour. What That hard left, it did sort of stop for a second and then obviously again kicked in. And then there was another section where it just sort of waited for that sort of grip to come and then yep. powered through there, no problem at all. But I cruised up there so slowly and it, with nary a wheel spin really, to be honest. Nice and car. easy. And yeah, that was, that, in terms of difficulty, that's probably a little bit more than you'd probably want to do in one of these cars. Yeah. But it still does it pretty well. Yeah. And I mean, if it means people can get out and see a bit of bush sometimes, then Absolutely. fantastic. I think most people would look at that and go, I'm not going to try that. But yep. it does go to show they're quite capable cars in their own right definitely. when used carefully. And a bit more capable than what people let on, I think. Yeah, definitely. Mate, we're at the Lost City, a beautiful view from this spot and an easy trip. We made it down those tracks relatively unscathed, but we certainly avoided some more difficult terrain along the way. I think that's where these things really excel, on. They're not going to be as outright capable as something like a Wrangler or a Defender, obviously. But still, if you're smart, you can come out to places like this on weekends, see a bit of the countryside, and then during the week, you've actually got a really comfortable family car. 